Coming up on American Medicine Today, we return to Dr. Stephen Masley's to discover more ways to incorporate healthier foods in a great tasting diet that will lead to a longer life. Then Matthew tells us how years of service finally caught up to him in the result of terrible back pain and dropped foot. After receiving procedures from the Bonatti Spine Institute, he is happy to be back at work pain-free. Finally, Dr. Bonatti discusses the Great Reset. America's youth believe socialism is possible while ignoring historical examples. Can we deprogram an entire generation that's been indoctrinated? Find out coming up on American Medicine Today. Featuring cutting edge science and medical innovation, touching personal stories of recovery from pain, along with political, social, and healthcare issues plaguing our nation. This is American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute and Alfred Bonatti, MD. We're here at the Florida home of Dr. Stephen Masley. He's a return guest, physician, nutritionist, chef, and author of the 30-day tune-up and a breakthrough plan to prevent and reverse heart disease. So thank you yet again for having us in your home, Dr. Masley. Oh, delighted to have you back. We know men and women both suffer uh, from cardiovascular disease. Why do you think that is? Men and women have this. I'm glad you, because some people think this is just a men's disease. And sure. so it's the number one killer for both men and women. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's still going on is because we're, I think, overly focused on hospital care okay. and procedures. We could prevent 90% of heart disease with lifestyle changes, yet we spend 90% of our resources treating it in the hospital. There was a good percentage of people that just die, and then the families find out they died of cardiovascular disease. Well, the first symptom could be because we have, you know, symptoms of angina where we get chest pressure. Mm -hmm. We may have no symptoms, and up to 30% of people can have a heart attack or death as their first symptom. Yes. So that's what we call a silent killer. What are some of the culprits of heart disease and cardiovascular disease? I think the classic ones we've been looking at over 50 years have been cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes, mm -hmm. obesity, family history. But what we're realizing is lifestyle is probably more important than any of those. Okay. What I call the four pillars for health and heart health mm -hmm. are the food we eat, the nutrients we get, our fitness level, and whether we're managing our stress. Okay. Those have a much bigger impact on whether we're at risk for heart disease than our cholesterol level. What are maybe a couple of things that we could do to kind of take away some of the stress? One, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Okay. Two, try to have some fun every day. Mm -hmm. Meditate, use an app like HeartMath, um, prayer, something that helps you get calm and peaceful every day proactively. What are some things that we can do to become more fit? So we would like to get our heart rate up. Yes. Something like a brisk walk, a bike ride, a jog, a class, something that gets our heart rate up. That's very important. Okay. But we also need muscle mass. So we want some kind of like yoga, strength training, either with weights or elastic bands. Okay. So both of those components are very important for fitness for your heart. And your book, it came out before, but this is a re-release with recipes, correct? Yes. In particular, we looked at re-emphasized blood sugar because yes. blood sugar is the number one cause for heart disease. Mm -hmm. Nutrients, which nutrients do you need and how do you get them? And then the micro, the gut microbiome is a very powerful predictor. So I think in just the last few years, we've realized your, the microbes in your gut determine your blood sugar level, your cholesterol level, how inflamed you are, your waistline and weight. Yes. Um, so they have a huge impact on our risk factors. People who eat, for example, a lot of red meat. Yes grow bacteria that produces a compound called TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. That, that high level raises your risk of heart disease by 62%. 62%. So that's from the bacteria in our gut. If we have probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics and fiber. Prebiotics okay. are like fiber. Yes. So we want more healthy probiotics in our diet. We want more fiber that the healthy bacteria need fiber to survive. And are we telling people that they should be taking pill supplements 
or is it better to eat nutrient-rich foods? Both. I'd like them okay. to follow like a Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. It's very nutrient-rich. Yes. You know, healthy fats, lots of fabulous fiber, fruit, vegetable, beans, and nuts are the theme, uh, yeah, along with some extra virgin olive oil and some seafood, maybe a touch of red wine with dinner. You know, th that's a really healthy diet. But still, many people, even if you know how to get magnesium, don't get there. Mm -hmm. So for vitamin D, magnesium, you know, zinc, those are things I look at that you people should get from a supplement. What would you say is your biggest takeaway of the 30-day heart tune-up? Don't wait. People are waiting for something bad to happen. With heart disease, yeah. that's a really bad idea. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, so what's your alternative? Once you've had a heart attack or you're dead, I mean, how do you apologize to your family for not paying attention sooner? When you follow this, what people tell me at 30 days is, thank you for giving me my life back. I feel so much better because what we're looking at is improving your circulation. If you improve your circulation, you stop growing plaque. You can shrink plaque and you're sharper. You have more energy. You're losing weight. You're mentally sharper and people feel so much better. That's the reason to get started. So you feel fantastic and you prevent the number one killer today. When you talk about shrinking plaque, in what time frame does that happen? To really measure a significant difference in our clinic, we usually use a year. Okay. So we can see someone's cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar drop from high to normal right. in a month, 30 okay. days. We can have you feel better in 30 days. So 30 days is the time frame I've used in my clinic to say, hey, maybe we can stop one of your medications or cut back on one of your medications. Yes. I'm not saying throw them away. I'm saying right. people need to work with their doctor to do this. Right. But many of my patients are able to get off their meds, feel better, and, and be shrinking their artery plaque over time. I'd like to give you a lifestyle that makes you feel fantastic, you eat delicious food, yes. and you don't need those meds. Mm -hmm. So not only is your book very educational, but you also have recipes embedded there. So why don't we talk about the four principles and I believe it's five foods? Well, the four principles about what to eat for your heart. Mm -hmm. Are, are basic, sure. fabulous fiber, more vegetable, fruit, beans, and nuts. That's gonna improve your health in multiple ways and make you feel better. Smart fat, we tend to villainize fat. It's, yes. This isn't about low fat. There are bad fats and there are smart fats and we wanna have more smart fat like extra virgin olive oil, okay. nuts, um, wild seafood like cold water salmon. What about avocado? And avocado and avocado oil. Yes. And even dark chocolate, not milk chocolate, it's gotta be dark chocolate. So all of those are like fats we need to improve our blood sugar and our cholesterol and our blood pressure. Dr. Masley shows us how to prepare three of his favorite dishes straight from the 30 day heart tune up. Beginning with roasted beet salad. We're gonna make some roasted root vegetables. We'll put some beets in here. And then I have some butternut squash. And then, you know, we've got some zucchini. Yeah. I've got a carrot that I diced up in here. A couple tablespoons of olive oil. Right. We're gonna just drizzle it over the top. Sprinkle some sea salt for me. Okay. In this dish, we use about a half a teaspoon. And then some black pepper and then a tablespoon of Italian herb seasoning. And then last are garbanzo beans. So garbanzos are a wonderful source of fiber. Place in the oven at 375 degrees, and 40 to 45 minutes later, you have a delicious heart-healthy meal. All of these are very low blood sugar, which is one of our themes for a Mediterranean diet that's low in sugar, low in flour. That's really what we're looking for. Next, Dr. Masley prepares an incredible Italian stew. We're looking at Italian seafood stew. The onion and the fennel and the carrot and um, red bell pepper, Italian herbs, the tomato, a little red wine. Then we're gonna add our seafood. We have white fish and scallops and some shrimp. And then we're gonna steam some mussels and clams separately aside. He adds seafood contains healthy fats that help prevent heart attacks. However, aside from salmon, big fish are high in mercury. 
Mercury goes up on the food chain. So mm -hmm. like the bigger mouth fish, grouper, tuna, bass, snapper, swordfish are very high in mercury. Clams, scallops, and mussels are a common ingredient in the Mediterranean diet. Dr. Masley says these are healthy options because of what they eat. Plankton eaters are the lowest mercury content you get of any of the seafood you eat. Finally, we prepare a poultry dish using Cornish hen. My Persian style of roasted Cornish game hen. Okay. Marinated overnight in lemon juice. Just simply put it in a bowl and turn it a couple times in the fridge overnight. All right. And then we're going to add chopped parsley, mint, and a little salt and pepper, and olive oil. After marinating for 20 minutes, the hen is placed in the oven at 350 degrees for two hours. Oftentimes you can eat better at home <laughs> than in a restaurant if you, if you know what the proper food to make. And that's the whole point of the 30-day hard tune-up, is to give people easy-to-make recipes that are delicious, that are really good for their health. And where can people find out more? Where can they get your book? The books are available wherever books are sold, sure. online or in stores. And you can also go to the website, drmasley.com. By adding delicious dishes like these to your diet, you'll be on your way to a much healthier life. Stay tuned, coming up after the break, a story of recovery. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti spine procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented the precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect 98.75% patient satisfaction. 75,000 procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Visit AskBonatti.com. My name is Matthew Hershack, and um, for fun, I like to hang out with my kids, my wife, and, and I also uh, participate in martial arts, uh, where I'm an instructor and a black belt. On or off duty, Captain Hershack stays on the go, but years of selfless work and dedication to his activities began to catch up with him. Lower back pain began interfering with his life. Uh, my pain started a lot of years ago, um, just at work, a lot of wear and tear, you know, you'd, you'd just tweak something here and there, and, and then about a uh, year and a half ago, it got pretty intense, and, um, you know, it, it just became un unlivable at one point. The pain was on my lower back, and it was a burning feeling, it was crampy, um, and it just kind of just hung out in the lower part of my back, just went from the, the whole, le whole left side to the right side, and, and it was just constant and intense, and there was a lot of times where I'd be doing activities and I'd have to go sit down, you know, and stretch out. And, um, but there was a lot of times that there was nothing I could do to make it feel better. The only other thing I was experiencing was my, my left foot. I was getting drop on my foot. So I'd be walking and, you know, I'd trip once in a while and just not really think anything of it. And there's a couple of times I almost fell on the treadmill and not realizing it until I got evaluated that I actually, my foot is dropping because of the pinching of my nerve. So it was interesting to find that out. Like many Bonatti surgical guests, he tried different conservative methods to treat his pain before considering surgery. I wasn't on any uh, prescription pain meds because it's something that I really don't believe in unless it's something that's really necessary. And you know, even as bad as my back was, I'm just not a person that would wanna take pain meds. So I dealt with it with the ibuprofen. I'd have to take ibuprofen before I go to bed um, you know, otherwise I'd wake up and, and be in a lot of pain multiple times a night. Before I found Dr. Bonatti, I was doing chiropractic care um, at one of the local chiropractors. Um, and I've been doing that for a really long time. Uh, he's made a lot of things feel better. Um, but the lower back pain just didn't seem like it was going away. So I also, he recommended me going to a sports medicine doctor uh, where they did injections. Um, and they talked about doing an ablation. I received six injections and they were um, right around the areas that my, I'm having pain and it was in the uh, facet joints. Basically it was a diagnostic injection um, and it took the pain away for a couple days and then it, uh, it came right back. Uh, when the doctor recommended an ablation, um, he explained the process to me and that it was going to be um, deadening the nerves in that area and that it can last anywhere from six months to a year and then I'd probably have to have it repeated. 
And he mentioned that other patients that have arthritis have it sometimes three times a year. And when I figured out the cost of it and how it was going to cost over $1,000 each time, I said, that's unacceptable. I need to find a way to get rid of this pain forever, you know, as far instead of just deadening the pain. Feeling certain the ablation wasn't going to solve his problem, Captain Hershack sought a second opinion from the Bonatti Spine Institute. I heard about the Bonatti Spine Institute from a good friend of mine. Uh, he's actually one of my uh, Aikido, in Aikido instructors. And uh, he had had several procedures with Dr. Bonatti and he'd been having great success with it. And um, so he, he was the one that recommended I get a second opinion and uh, try to figure something else out. Prior to going to the Bonatti Spine Institute, um, I had submitted all my information, an advocate had contacted me, and then uh, while I was at the gym, Dr. Bonatti personally called me and uh, went over my chart and kind of laughed. He was like, you know, oh, you're, you're pretty young to have, uh, you know, pain like this, you know, what's, what's going on? And, uh, you know, I explained to him, you know, working at the job and this and that, and, you know, I, I appreciate how he took the time to call me. Um, I appreciate how he was very open and honest about how an ablation wasn't going to work and he in fact even said that if I got an ablation it'd probably last a week and I'd be back in pain. He says that's not the area where you're having pain. He says your, your pain is your, your discs and, your, and, the, and the nerves coming off your spine. He says it's not the facet joints. He scheduled his consultation knowing the staff at Benatti could fully eliminate his pain, not just offer him a band-aid. I was really really impressed how everything is on campus. You know, all the imaging and, you know, all the surgeons are right there and, and nursing staff and, and it was very cool just to go through that whole entire process. The surgeon that I met with uh, when I went to the Institute it was Dr. Granati. He was a very cool gentleman. You know, he came in the room and, and he put my chart up on the screen and, and he says, you know, I'm gonna go over where you're having pain, where I think you're having pain and, you know, what we're gonna do and, and you know, let me know if that's where you think you're having pain, you know, and he kind of went over the chart and explained to me what he's, what he's seeing in the MRI, and, and he goes, this is where I think you're having the issue. And I was like, yep, dead on. That's where I'm having it. I felt like so confident at that point because this guy knows he's talking about, because that is exactly where I'm feeling my pain. You know, this is what I'm experiencing. Um, and, and it felt very reassuring that it wasn't just me saying, you know, hey, this is my pain. And he goes, well, it could be this or that. You know, it felt very reassuring that, you know, he knew exactly where the issue was. Captain Hershack had one multi-level procedure at L4, L5, and L5-S1. Before my procedure, they explained to me the conscious sedation part of the procedure, and I just thought that was fascinating, because, you know, most people, they go into surgery and they're out, and then they wake up and the whole surgery is done, but this is, they were letting me know that, you know, you're kind of going to be like in a twilight state, we're going to wake you up, and, and uh, you know, we're going to have instruments in your back, and and you'll be awake for that and aware and able to answer questions for us. Then we want you to let us know whether you're feeling pain in your back or feeling a pain in your leg. And I don't know if they were pulling on nerves or what they were doing, but they, they touched one spot and I went, oh, leg, leg, leg. And, and then, uh, then they touched my back and I went, oh, that's my back. You know, so, but then once they told me to arch back up, I just put my hands on the table and propped up and, and didn't have any discomfort in my lower back. It was all gone. My pain was gone before I even left the operating room. When I was in the recovery room, um, they had me get up and walk. And I walked from one end of the room to the other, and um, the doctor actually stopped me and said, you know, why are you walking like that? And I said, like what? And he said, you know, I don't know, walk heel to toe, put your back up straight, you know, stand up straight. And that was something I wasn't able to do for a while. Um, and it was a very emotional experience, you know, knowing that, wow, I can actually walk the right way. My back doesn't hurt, you know, and, and that was a big eye opener, big, big emotional eye opener for sure. The Bonatti Spine Institute has been fortunate enough to help people like Fire Rescue, professional athletes and law enforcement get back to their physically demanding careers. Should you be suffering with chronic pain? Captain Hershack has a piece of advice. Don't wait. You know, it's kind of scary when you're you're working in a field and you wonder if a back injury is going to, you know, take you out of work, you know, so you, can, you can't do your job and now I'm able to do that job. Martial arts is one of the things I love and a lot of times the pain would be really bad and I wouldn't be able to perform like I need to and um, just going to class and then coming home, I'd be in agony laying on my bed, um, but I would push through it and, you know, deal with it, but definitely since all that pain is gone now, it's been a great improvement in my life. I think if somebody's suffering in pain, 
like I was, you know, don't hold out. Don't get stuck, you know, taking pain pills and, and you know, you got to go get it fixed. If it's something that's able to be corrected, it's worth the time to go in there and get it done. I think everybody was shocked, like, really, you had surgery today? I had a drain tube. I was at my desk doing payroll for 200 employees, worked till night, got up, went to bed. Actually, the recovery was great. I mean, I really immediately felt the difference. I was able to go back to work within a couple of days. The progress after each procedure was amazingly good. The recovery, all told, has been phenomenal. The recovery was pretty easy. I was able to walk around after surgery with no problem. And when I got up off that table, it was like, you know, like a reborn again when I was able to walk off that table and walk out and go for lunch. I went in there at 10 o'clock, got operated on. At 12 o'clock, I was walking out on my own. This type of surgery is so much more advanced and the recovery time is so much less that it's just a no-brainer. If you've got pain, go to Bonatti. This is the honest to God truth. And was recovering, I didn't feel anything. The pain that I was suffering is gone. I can go back to work in like three days. The surgeries that I had, actually, I recovered very easily from, I would say. Um, I actually went to work the following afternoon. That afternoon, when it was done, I actually felt so much better already. Six days after surgery, I was back in the gym, slowly but surely working my way back to, back to fighting, back to, back to basically 100% of fighting, you know? So six days and everybody was in awe, like, didn't you just get out of surgery? I'm like, yeah, I feel great. First time I came in here was Monday, and today is Thursday. I've had two surgeries and am doing fantastic. I'm still in shock that I can walk. That's all within four days. Benati succeeds where others fail. Welcome back to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Benati alongside Ethan Euchre and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benati. So a couple weeks ago, we had on guest Mark Morano talking about the Great Reset and kind of that whole new world order. Why does that have you riled up, Doc? The Great Reset is nothing more than a word to communism. Yes. Uh, they call it Great Reset. Mm -hmm. For what? Exactly. It's not great. Mm -hmm. okay? And the reset is just to put us in communism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The youth on this country is so extremely, extremely manipulated mm -hmm. that they believe in things that they are not truth. Or indoctrinated. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. and they do it in the schools, they do it in the universities, and they do it into the media. Those three elements practically created the, the fighting group for communism okay. because they don't really know what, what they are doing. <laughs> But well, why does everyone follow along? Those that are educated, worldly, they've traveled, they've seen the demise of the countries that have um, fallen into communism and the grief it's caused for citizens of those countries. Why would they want to take us down that path? It's a small amount of very noisy people. Yes, the ones with the megaphones. Okay. Yep. And unfortunately, they are astute enough that they put their efforts in educating kids what United States offer to their citizens mm -hmm. is an incredible life. The only thing that you need to do is you need to be a hard worker and a responsible individual. Correct. And you will achieve the American dream. The American dream. Yes. Okay. The mentality of communism is not society, right. it's not a person, mm -hmm. it's control. The only way to fight this is and re-educate our youth. The first thing that's gonna disappear is everything that is media, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be a media, governmental media. Mm -hmm. And those ones will be people that they will be very hard and the only thing that they will do is what the group to manage that institution. Yes. 
tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. So we would not have media. We would not have youth because the youth will be so corrupted that they would not have ever the possibilities to achieve ever the American dream because they, it's impossible in socialism to be independent, to have freedom, and to have an economy. If you have an economy, you're going to fight. That is why one of the ideas of socialism is destroy the economy. Mm -hmm. And if you start to see how much damage are they doing to the American economy, it's not because they are bad managers. It's because is a part of the program to control society yes. that the society would not have wealth. Mm -hmm. They are they're trying to make people second guess making their own way when they can have supposedly an easier life by the government saying how much you can make, what you can have, what you can achieve. Yes, but you never will achieve anything. Of course will not. be a very small little mm -hmm. group. The fact that Putin has cancer. Putin does. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. Nobody talks about what type of a cancer mm -hmm. and in which situation he is. Mm -hmm. This type of attacks that they are doing right now mm -hmm. to the European nations there and destroying monuments and destroying cities mm -hmm. is not really in the mind of a rational person. So is he with tumors, in the, uh, with tumors on, on the brain? If that is true, we need to be very careful that this man doesn't put an atomic bomb mm -hmm. and just send it. Right. Because mm -hmm. he, if he knows he's going to die... What does he care? He mm -hmm. just don't care. Mm -hmm. right. And if his mind is totally, totally sick, probably we will go to, uh, in a war with nukes. No, oh, that's a scary thought. We have a president that is practically mentally insane. Mm -hmm. So between those two, mm -hmm. that they are the leaders of the world. It's a catastrophe. That is, that is something that can be extremely, extremely dangerous. The media mm -hmm. is not exploring the possibilities. Right. And I personally feel that this is something that needs to be needs to be talked more about. Mm -hmm. Well, you heard it here first on American Medicine Today. Make sure you check us out next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on Newsmax. And if you like the show and you want to see more, visit the American Medicine Today YouTube channel. If you have any comments or questions, contact us at the number below. You can tweet at Dr. Benati using hashtag American Medicine Today or hashtag AMT. We would like to hear from you.